Welcome back to another very exciting tutorial here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Instagram at JR from PTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the 3D pop-out photo effect in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark previews or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. We're going to start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we want to do is we want to isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create a selection around the black area to isolate it. But I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. And I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on this drop down. Click on one corner then click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to make it red just so that you can see it. There it is red. What I'm going to do now is enable the layer of the snow border. I'm going to click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm also going to double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just going to make a selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging and notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. Okay, now that I have the selection active around the snow border, I'm going to select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm going to do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it. So they're both selected and I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both and they can be in different groups and they can be separated so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Control T, Command T to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Control 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. Then I'm going to click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift Alt, that's Shift Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go into window properties, click on mask edge, and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So and keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone, but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush select that I can click and drag here on the hair and hopefully we'll get a better selection. Now, it didn't do that good of a job here. So 
I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm gonna press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I wanna keep. So I'm just gonna paint with white in these areas here. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we gotta work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final result. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, right click and choose fit to screen. And what we're gonna work on now is extra elements that are gonna help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're gonna use. We're gonna use this shovel with the snow. So let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of this shovel. I'm gonna click on the lasso tool and I'm gonna make a selection around this shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. That's okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace, or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press OK. And Photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear. I'm gonna press Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. And this is what we're gonna work with. The first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground. So I'm gonna go into the channels panel and I'm gonna look for the channel that's got the most contrast. In this case, the blue channel. I'm gonna click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is fill with white on the areas that I wanna keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just gonna click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I wanna keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt and backspace option, backspace on the Mac, then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto a self using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It, essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK. And what I'm gonna do now is go into image, adjustment, levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right. So we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're gonna be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm gonna drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well and press OK. Now, what I'm gonna do now is click on the brush tool, select black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm gonna increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard and I'm just gonna paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, you should be good. And I'm just painting these pixels away, which represent the floor. And once again, I'm gonna go into image, adjustment, levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid-tones a little bit. And press okay. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm gonna press Control, 
Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the Layers panel. On the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the Move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, and then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T on the Mac to transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 on the Mac. There's the corner handles, and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right-click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little bit better, and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right-click on it and choose Distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with, maybe something like this, and press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen, then I'm gonna press V on the keyboard for, to get the move tool, and maybe I can move it around if I need to, and I'm gonna click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm gonna click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm gonna collapse it, and now it's in that group. Next, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then, with the brush tool, I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black and maybe shape the snow a little bit better. So maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the libraries panel and I'm going to open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the Libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the Lasso tool, and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to Edit, and copy, or you can press Control C. I'm going to deselect that element, Control D, Command D on the Mac, go back into the file that we're working with, and I'm going to paste it here, Control V, Command V on the Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen so the black pixels disappear, and we only keep the bright pixels, in this case, the snow. Then I'm going to press Control T, Command T to transform. Control 0, Command 0 for bird's eye view, and I'm going to scale this element down. I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 again to zoom back in, and I'm going to just rotate it and make it fit accordingly. Now, in this case, I'm going to flip it horizontally. So, right click on it, flip horizontally, and keep rotating it. So, maybe something, something like this. And I I can you know, scale it more if I need to or rotate it more if I need to. So whatever distortions I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press Enter to accept that transformation. And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right down here. Again, Control c to copy and paste that in here. Change the Blend Mode to Screen. Control t to Transform. That's Command-T in the Mac. Control 0 Command-0 on the Mac, and scale this one in as well. And I'm going to zoom in and 
rotate this one into position, maybe right about here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm going to click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm going to press V to select the move tool and I'm going to move it around just to fit it into position. So maybe something like this. And actually I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut off right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. Now the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here on the table, it needs a shadow. So I'm going to open up this group, double click on the snow layer here, and click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame and just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply and notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadow. So the shadows would be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm going to do now is right above this snow element here I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to paint with this color here under the board so you can click on the eyedropper tool select that color and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light something like that and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board and actually let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board, so maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down, so maybe something like that. Now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, then upload it to Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. Every so often I do a search for that hashtag and if I find your image, I'll leave a comment. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you enjoy the tutorial, don't forget to click that like button and share this video with a friend. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Photoshop training channel now. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.